Hello everyone and welcome to the MHSCG video tutorial on how to do a COB. Now, COB is an acronym which stands for Cut Out Background, where you cut the subject out of a photo to be dropped into another design. This is very commonly done in graphic design for things such as posters, screen wallpapers, video game covers, or giant wall stickers. Here's how it works. We're going to start with an image. We'll then crop the image fairly close to the subject to minimize our amount of work. Next, we'll erase a path around the subject using the shift-click technique while zoomed in fairly close. Finally, we'll use the polygonal lasso tool to select the area around the subject and delete. We'll have our cob. Alright, so let's start by opening an image we want to cob in Photoshop. How about um, uh, Tyrion Lannister from one of my favorite shows, Game of Thrones. So we need to open a Google window type in Tyrion Lannister and of course click on images. Now we are going to get a wide array of results uh, for our search and a lot of them are going to be small images. We always want to work with very big images uh, otherwise our images and our edges are going to be very pixelated. So go to size, select large and now we're seeing numbers that are consistently about a thousand or wow that one's huge about a thousand or above in both width and height so uh, this is an intriguing pose this looks good for what we're trying to do so let's click on that then click on view image to open it up and I have a magnifying glass with a plus in it that means this image is not at actual size yet if I click I can see how big it really is and there we go so this works great Let's right click and hit save image as and save it how you want it to the location you need and OK. So let's go into the folder. There's our file and I'm going to drag it over Photoshop and let it open up. There we go. Okay, so the first thing that I want to do is go to layers and unlock it. Right now it's locked and to unlock it I just double click and it asks what to name it and uh, right now layer 0 is fine because most cobs get dropped into another design so we can name it then. So I'm just gonna click OK. Now I want to crop the image to get rid of all this extra dead space that uh, I don't want to have to erase so I'm gonna click on the crop tool and I want to make sure that width, height, and resolution are all empty in their fields. Now I'm just going to click and drag a marquee. Now I want to be close, but I don't want to be touching edges. So give it a little bit of breathing room. And once you have your crop the way you want it, click OK. Now we're ready to get started. First thing I want to do is create my layer mask. And a layer mask is going to allow us uh, to only hide the information we don't want to see as opposed to permanently deleting it which is really helpful if we find mistakes or want to bring parts back so the first thing we're going to do is go to layer layer mask and select reveal all now in the layer palette you'll see that a white box appeared next to it this is the mask this is what's going to be covering up the parts of the images that we don't want make sure that anytime you are erasing that this box appears around the mask not the image if you erase in the image, it permanently deletes. If you uh, mask in the, or if you erase in the mask, then it's only temporarily being hidden. And last step, I just want to create a new layer. I'm going to drag it underneath, and I'm going to fill it a really obnoxious color, uh, so that uh, when I erase, I can see my edges really clear. Now my image is probably still grayscale, so let me make sure it's RGB don't merge and I'm just gonna pick a really obnoxious color that does not appear in my image already and so I'm gonna go with a nice nuclear waste green click on my paint bucket if you don't see your paint bucket it's hiding underneath the gradient tool and just hit fill so now I'm ready okay so how a layer mask works is this uh, I need to make sure that this layer is active and make sure that the box is over the layer mask but when I erase it deletes and it's revealing the layer underneath we can see the mark I made in my thumbnail but I can paint it back if I feel like it's a mistake and that's the magic of the layer mask so let's get started I need to click on my eraser brush 
I need to make sure that the harness is at 100%. And the size is going to vary. We don't want something too small because then we can't make our polygonal lasso selection. Uh, or something too big where we have too simplistic of an edge around our cop. So let's zoom in. Let's figure out a starting point. And it doesn't matter where you start because you have to go all the way around. Uh, but I usually start at the top and work my way to the left. So this brush is a little bit big. I'm going to shrink it down a little bit to about there, 15. That works here. Now, 15 is just what I'm using for this image. Uh, you might need a different size. Um, so you can play around with that. Okay, so uh, when it comes to hair, or any edge for that matter, when you zoom in, because a raster image is made up of squares and we have a bunch of curves, the only way it can try and make it look smooth when zoomed all the way out is to blur the edges. And this is called aliasing. Well, the problem is, is that when we are doing our cob, most people would be inclined to do the extreme edge to make sure all the pixels remain. Problem is, is that it is blurred. So we actually have to, instead of cutting here, which would leave behind a halo right here at this edge. All right. Um, we are going to cut just into it to make sure that we get all the pixels that have any hint of the background in them whatsoever. All right. So we're going to be cutting a little bit into the image, but not much, just a pixel or two. All right. Let me go back up to the top. And when it comes to hair, Hair can be a little problematic. Uh, we have clumps of hair that have really defined edges like here, but then we also have these little flyaway hairs where we can actually see back through to the background. And we just want to just cut those out. We don't need those. What you want to do when it comes to hair is to get rid of any hairs where you can see the background. We just want to stick to where the hair looks solid. So. Uh, let me get my brush back up, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and get started. Make sure I'm overlapping where I need to be, not here, but here. Cut into it just a little bit. And when it comes to hair, the messier it is, the more I actually want to freehand it so that uh, it has more of an organic, natural look to it. It has some imperfections in it, as opposed to using the shift-click technique, which we'll be using later. So I'm going to come down around here, and as you go, all right, there I messed up, so I can just paint that back, no problem, and try again. That's the beauty of this tool. So uh, I'm going to, there we go, get rid of all this. I'm going to come in and keep that. Now my brush is a little bit too big, so I need to do some more detail work. So I'm going to shrink my brush by hitting left bracket and come around, cut out all that. And making appropriate decisions on what to keep with hair and what to delete like this, uh, that just comes with experience. So when in doubt, ask questions. OK, now once we get to skin, we do want to use the shift click technique so that we have smooth edges. Now I'm back to the hair. I'm going to get this little niche. And now I need a smaller brush again. I'd like to keep that. We're going to try. If it doesn't look good, I can always delete, delete it later. Come in. Get rid of this. Keep that curl. And let's go back to a bigger brush now. All right. Now, once I get to the skin, I want to transform to the shift click technique. I'm going to zoom in a little bit more. And remember, the shift click technique just says that if I click in one spot, move the mouse, hold down shift, and click, it draws a straight line between those two points. And we also do this for curves, that if you just click more often, you can actually get pretty smooth curves. So I'm going to start attacking the edge, overlapping just a little bit to get rid of that blurred edge. And again, the chin's more curved, so I'm going to have to click more often. Coming through. 
And so we're just going to continue this all the way around the image until it's the path goes along all the edges. Now, once we get to the side of the image, I can't scroll anymore because I've hit the edge. If I just hit F, that'll allow me more freedom to move the image, which will be real helpful. All right, let's get back to it. Okay, so the path around the subject is complete. Now we can check our work. Let's just zoom in on an edge. It doesn't matter where we start. And if you right click on the layer mask thumbnail and select disable layer mask, you'll be able to hide and show the work you've done. So you can go along an edge and check to see if there's something that you cut off that you wanted to put back, uh, like hair, or maybe you cut in too deep in a spot and you need to do some repairs. And that's very easily done by clicking on the paintbrush and painting in a particular area so that you can go back with your eraser and recut. Oops. And that's how that's done. Okay, so now it's time to go ahead and select the areas outside our subject and hit delete. To do this we're going to be using the polygonal lasso and that is hiding underneath the freehand lasso tool. Mine's already selected. Here's how it works. Click on one spot, move the mouse and click again and it draws a straight line between those two points. Navigate around, back to your original point of origin and a little circle will pop up next to your tool letting you know you're about to close off the shape. Now we can either delete what's inside of it or select inverse, go to select, choose inverse, and delete what's outside of it. Okay, now if you make a mistake as you're navigating around, if you just hit delete, it'll back up one point at a time, kind of like I'm pulling a thread out of a cloth. One issue with this tool is, is if you accidentally double click, it will draw a straight line between where you're at and your point of origin closing off the marquee. There's no way to undo this. If this happens, you're going to have to start over. Okay, so let's get started. Before I start working with my polygonal lasso, I want to make sure that my document will move when I get close to the edges. So once again, like when I get down here to the bottom, will I be able to scroll past the bottom, which I'll need to, to exit the image. Don't forget, all you have to do is hit F, it'll unlock that, and now I can move outside the actual document. Okay, click on the polygonal lasso. Doesn't matter where you start, let's zoom in first. Doesn't matter where you start because you have to make it all the way around. And you just want to be zoomed in close enough that you can see where you need to go. Once you get to the edge of your screen, if the tool gets close to the edge, it'll auto scroll for you. Sometimes it goes a little bit too fast, so just be careful. And we just work our way around. Okay, now that I'm at the bottom, I want to exit the document clearly. Come all the way across to the point of re-entry, like that. And then just continue. Okay, so I'm all the way back to where I started. Just overlap that point, circle pops up, and there's my marquee. Hit Control-0, then just go to Select, Select Inverse, and Delete. Now the only thing left for me in this case is this one little piece down here, so that's very easily fixed. Let me zoom in, and I can do the same thing. Just create a marquee around it very quickly and then just hit delete. Now, there is our cob ready to be dropped into another design.